Hey everyone, we are Tony and Sonia, and after more than 20 years of teaching, we finally decided we'd had enough and it was time for some adventure. So we quit our jobs, rented out our house and sold pretty much everything we owned. And while most midlife crises end up with a sports car, we bought a narrowboat called Kimberly Joe. And along with our newest crew member, Willow, we travel all over the UK's stunning and beautiful canal network. It'd be great if you came along and joined us on the same ship, different day. Join us this week as I give woodcutting lessons to those out there that need them. We try out a new fuel to keep us warm overnight and we lose something off of our roof and our trip over the aqueduct. But we start this week off with a road trip. Right, today we are off to our family. So we're going to see my mum and dad and my sister who's over from Honduras. Um, and then from there we're going to go on and see Sonia's mum and dad and their dog Bella in Margate. So Plumstead first, on to Margate. Here, yeah, see what it's going to be like. Hopefully she'll be okay on the journey. She was good when we brought her, when we first got her, but she weren't great when we went to the vets at first. So hopefully she'll be all right for the journey. And obviously since we got her, there's a little bit more stuff that we need to take when we go on a trip. So, a road trip and stopping her eating the stuff that's in the bags. That's it, get your close up. And when we got to my mum's, we let Willow straight out in the garden and she absolutely loved it. And the fact that she could just come and go as she pleased. After visiting Tony's mum, we popped to my mum's. Willow tried her very best to get Bella to play, but unfortunately, Bella wasn't having any of it. She was quite happy, just laying in her bed, ignoring the puppy. Hi, so we're just back from visiting family the last day or so. We had a really lovely time. Willow was great in the car. She only vomited twice, <laughs> two journeys. Um, but we're back. We didn't do much filming while we were away because we just wanted to spend some time with our family and uh, just have a really relaxing time. So we're back on the boat, got some jobs to do. And uh, yeah, we're here for a few more days until we head off sometime next week. So last year we attempted to grow some bits and bobs on the boat and I wasn't very successful. So this year I'm going to get in early. I've got some Tiny Tim tomatoes. Um, they're tumblers so they go really nicely in a pot. I've got some strawberries. I'm going to go from seeds. I've got propagators and I've got some lettuce because that didn't take at all last year. So I think I was a bit late, but who knows. So that's what we're doing today. Tony's sorting out the bike. Um, which will help us out when we go and get the car once the tow paths have stopped being so muddy. So yeah, we're taking advantage of a really nice spring day. And Willow's just really enjoying being on the towpath. Well, it's quite a windy day here in um, Cosgrove and today I'm going to do a boat job that's been bugging me for ages and I just couldn't be bothered to get the battery and the saw out of the dinette. But I'm going to attempt to chop up this wood today so we've got some wood, get rid of it before um, the warmer weather comes and we're not carrying around fuel that we don't need. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give that a go today, see how we get on. Mm. Did it float or just sink? No, it's floating, it's wood. Oh. Right, I can't put my... Right, I'll lean on the boat. Ugh. I have to let that one dry out. Yep. So we spent, like, about six months drying that one out. <laughs> so I just throw it in the water. Just want to point out, we have our own... Um, over there we've got our Black & Decker chainsaw. <laughs> and just here we've got our Black & Cocker. Chainsaw. Okay, 
Right, so that's me done. Oh, don't do a lot. But it's starting to rain. He doesn't know what he's doing today. It was bright sunshine earlier on today. Then there were hailstones. Then it was bright sunshine, wind. Now it's raining. So I'm going in. I've got a bit of wood. I'm going to go and burn that this afternoon. A few weeks ago, I mentioned in one of the vlogs that we were struggling to keep the fire going all the way through the night, which is true. Um, and we're, we're getting up proper early as well with the puppy. So, um, yeah, we struggle with some embers and sometimes we get it going, but it's really hard work. And someone left a very nice message um, that they enjoyed the vlog. So they left a nice message. Um, and they're basically saying, had we considered like night briquettes? And honestly, no, basically it's always just been too much effort for us to um, go and get the stuff. And then if we try it, we might have wasted money and we've got to store it and all that sorts of stuff. So the very kind people at, I don't know if you can see it behind me here. So the very kind people at Le Lecto. So they sent us through some samples to let us have a go and see what we think. So I'm just going to show you all the stuff they've set through because really they've sent us a load of stuff. We're really looking forward to trying it out. Three bags of kindling. These are the night briquettes that they're speaking about. These are the things that we really want to be trying out. So they sent through, um, as you can see, four boxes of that. And they've also sent us um, some hardwood firewood, three lots of hardwood firewood and three lots of oak firewood. So yeah, all we want to do really now is just try it out, see what it's like, see if it works. Um, like I say, we've always liked a wood fire. Back in our, um, we used to have a house, we used to have a cottage out in Kent and we used to have a, like a big wood, wood fire that we used to light every night. It was fantastic. I remember some great Christmases in front of that fire. So um, yeah, looking forward to trying it out and letting you know exactly what they're like. So as Tony said, we were given a lot of um, an opportunity to try out night bricks by Lecto Fuels. Um, they sent us a range of their products actually, uh, from oak logs, hardwood logs, kindling, um, fire lighters. We've been using the logs and they're great. Um, the boat's never been higher. Uh, but we're going to give the um, night lock, night bricks a go. So we haven't had a chance really to try the night bricks. So um, the idea being that these are supposed to stay alight and keep warm all night because it's actually been quite warm we've got the springs on the way but tonight the temperature is dropping and it's going to drop to about two degrees so we are definitely set to use these so we're going to give these a go so the instructions are I think Tony said that they're made of um, compressed like compressed bark they look quite dense um, so perhaps that's why they last all night um, we're going to put them in tonight so you have to have they recommend a warm wood stove um, it's not a deal breaker if the stove isn't warm because you just have to put up with a bit of smoke so but we've got a warm stove because it has been a bit chilly today although we've been baking on this boat and um, we're going to give them a go we we'll use two bricks for one night so I'm covered in brick dust now because I didn't deal with that properly um, we're going to put these in tonight and I'll let you know what it's like in the morning when I get up right, so we do have a log on there at the moment but um, once I close that that'll do it so you put the logs in the, the night bricks in I'm too scared about burning myself now. Once you've got the night bricks in and they've started to catch, you need to change the airflow so that there's little airflow going in. So close it up pretty much, but not completely closed so it does need some air to burn. But you close them down um, just to keep them burning slowly through the night. And as I say, in the morning, I will show you what we're greeted with when we get up and see if it works. I've got my fingers crossed. That morning everyone, it is very early. It's probably about six o'clock because if you've ever had a puppy you'll know they don't sleep in. So we're going to check the fire and see how the night brick got on last night. Let me see, still a light. I'm going to chuck a couple of logs on there now and that will just uh, get going nicely. So, big success. The boat is actually really warm. Let's just check the temperature of the boat. And the boat is... It's uh, 31 degrees. Can't be 31 degrees. And there's frost outside on the grass. The CO2 monitor says it's 31 degrees. It's not 31 degrees, but it's warm in here. That's the most important thing. Um, so yeah, we're good. No, no, no. We have one. Very fluffy little puppy has had her first little fall into the canal. She's really excited. She's sitting now because she's just staring at the screen, but she's been really excited since doing it. So she's turned into a little furball. First one, she did swim, she did stay afloat. She's only been there for about three seconds.
But yeah, first one. Looks a little bit sorry for herself now. Say goodbye, Willow, to your Say first friends. Goodbye, Willow, to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're at the El Sand Point in Cosgrove. Yes, yeah, we've been here for like nearly two weeks. What, um, at the El Sand Point? No, <laughs> in Cosgrove. So we've actually both for sets this morning, um, which is always a joy. Yeah, uh, we got with, as we keep saying, we're doing a fairly short one today. Only because it's going to rain, it's supposed to rain about 10 o'clock, but as always, we've been up about six because of the puppy. Yeah, we get up earlier now, move <laughs> earlier. We were on the move at eight o'clock this morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's quite nice though, we've just got one lot to do. Um, there's uh, aqueducts, which if it's not too windy, I'll try and get the drone up so you get some footage of that. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to that, that'll be our first proper aqueduct. So it's the Cosgrove aqueduct. Yeah, I will pass this for you, it looks pretty cool actually. And I'll. Um, as we go over, I'll tell you a little bit about it that I've read about while we've been in Cosgrove. Oh, can you? If you're wondering, like the eye, <laughs> it's nothing to do with the puppy. It was my own fault, at least that's what Sonia told me. She said to <laughs> do something, I didn't do it in time. So, I mean, you know, next time I'll learn, I'll do it a bit quicker next time. He needs to behave himself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the plan that for today. Right, you've got to actually what? tell him he went to football and got injured. So, on Saturday. Yeah. I thought it was mud when he first turned up, but no, it's a bad guy. It's obviously annoyed somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, that's not serious <laughs> stuff. Serious stuff. So yeah, we've done rubber, we've done the L sand, fill it up with water, and then we'll be on our way. So it's a bit of a blustery day today. Didn't think it was, did you? What? Blustery. Yeah, yeah, but, I think it was that. Huh? But as you can see, like the trees are blown, so we're really not gonna go very far. Um, we've got a boat going down the lock in front of us, one coming up the lock in front of us, and then we're just gonna plow on down to Wolverton and probably stay there. Over the iron trunk aqueduct at Cosgrove. It's a bit windy, so I don't know if Tony's managed to get the drone up. reverse to see if we can um, get it.
coming now. Tony, there's a boat coming. I was going to come back. So, there's now a boat coming. It was coming down the lock after us. So we're going to ask them to fish it out for us. They, were, they seemed very nice at the locks, actually. Very efficient, so fingers crossed. Watch this space. Oh, no, it's floating. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's in the middle of the aqueduct there. Here comes a boat, the rescue boat. So for them, what should have been a nice, pleasant, peaceful journey across the aqueduct, they're now on a dog bird rescue mission. Fun? Oh, great fun, eh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Could have been there for ages. But right, words about mooring up there, son. <laughs> you mean what way it was like? Come yes. On. Windy and hard work because they had to keep putting the boat in, it kept being blown out from the bank by the wind kept catching it. So we decided it's too windy, it's going to rain according to the weather forecast. So even though this isn't the place we choose, we're stopping here. So this night. is? Old Wolverton. Um, we haven't gone very far, but after the dramas of losing the dog bed, um, we decided this is it, we're doing here, and we're going to go shopping and get some bits and pieces. It's Perfect. only there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah no distance. No distance at all. So yeah, we're here for the night, um, and then we might take a trip on tomorrow depending on the weather. But it's, I, I don't like cruising in the wind, it's just hard work. <laughs> it is, and mooring up is really hard work as well in the wind. Yeah, I like, you know, if you, if, I don't know how single people do it when they moor up when it's windy. In the end, as you can hear, we got it just in time. So the heavens have opened. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not the best looking mooring. I don't know if you can see through. There's kind of like buildings being done up on the other side and stuff. Um, and there's a bridge just behind us, which is fairly main road. But it's only about a mile from Tesco's and McDonald's. So we've had a McDonald's already. And again, I don't know if you can see, but just that's behind me, probably like here-ish. Um, there's a pub on the corner. So we might have a little pop in there a little bit later on. Right, so as Tony said, we um, it's tipping it down with rain outside now. So, so glad we moored up when we did put the stove on we've got some logs burning away and um, yeah it's been nice and warm on the boat a little bit of an update on the old night bricks that we've been using we've used them for a few nights now because we've had a couple of nights where the temperatures dropped and um, we're really happy with them every morning we've got up there's been um, embers on still in the stove but also the temperature of the boat has been at like you know 19 20 21 degrees when we're getting up so not 30 well not 31, no. Well, I'd just woken up by my, <laughs> with my eyes, like a mole. Um, so, yeah, really, really, that could be a real game changer for us next winter, uh, especially on those really, really cold nights um, where it's like minuses. I think it would make a big difference. So, yeah, really, really pleased with these and, uh, yeah, could give them a go next year um, when the winter really kicks in. And just to point out that it isn't paid. Oh, no, this is not a paid... Uh, ugh, this is not a paid promotion. At all, this is genuinely our um, opinion. Uh, we've used them. I say we we struggled to keep the the coals alight all night, and even if we keep the coals alight all night, the temperature still drops because there's just not enough. There just wasn't enough oomph. I don't. I know some people use coal cages. I mean, we've not tried that yet, but maybe we'll give that a go as well. But we're up to try anything really, um, because we have a nice warm toasty boat when we go to bed. It's nice to get up to a warmish boat in the morning. There you go. So yeah, really impressed with them so far. We'll put. Um, a link in the description below so that if you're interested in looking into lecto fuels and seeing what they've got to offer um, give them, click on the link and that'll take you to their range right so the fire's on um, I've just baked some bread 
we're going to have a chilled out evening in front of the TV. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for subscribing as always and um, keep those comments coming. See you next week. Mm -hmm.